You heard Steve Pierce from the, the opening segment there in regards to this middleway water situation that we left you with. We spoke with Jefferson County Commission President Steve Stolifer before the Thanksgiving break with Steve Pearson on the Friday morning before the break. And now we welcome in Stacy Chapman. She's with Protect Middleway, and she joins us in studio. Stacy, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming in. How was your holiday? It was short but enjoyable. Short but enjoyable. Did you have to work? <laughs> I did work the last three days. Right. Yes. You're, you're a nurse. I am a nurse. A labor and delivery at Berkeley. Yeah, and, But you don't have to go to work today when this is over. No, I am off today, thank goodness. Well, appreciate you spending some of your off day with us this morning. I know this is a very important issue for you. And I know this is not what you do professionally, like us idiots here in the studio. <laughs> this is <laughs> term loose, used loosely. <laughs> uh, so it, it will be interesting to hear your point of view because you called, um, I guess, about a week and a half ago. Uh, just when I was looking for somebody, you kind of called out of the blue and said, hey, I'd like to get uh, our side of the story on on this one here. So, so tell me what your concerns are and the folks at Protect Middleway. Well, we have several concerns. The biggest one is the water extraction. One, the amount of water that's going to be extracted. And two, whether that water extraction will move the quote-unquote toxic plume that's under the old 3M factory closer to our homes where we live. Tell us about that toxic plume, what you know of it. They... Uh, when manufacturing was there, some of the chemicals that leached down into the ground, um, TCE, DCE, um, they have very long uh, scientific names, uh, are currently under the old 3M plant in the water. Uh, it's considered stable. Uh, but our concern is if they extract such large volumes of water, about 1.2 miles away, that it will cause that toxic plume to move and his middle way sits between the where they plant a pump and where the current 3m factory that they want to use for their business is located do you know how big that toxic plume is i do not know in size how big it is but uh it it's it's considerable okay and and the chemicals that you mentioned and mr gilstrap's a safety engineer so he'll have a little knowledge on this too i'm going to guess here but uh Tell me your concerns about those chemicals. What do they cause if ingested? They are forever chemicals. They are considered um, uh, immune disruptors. They also uh, can break down and, and cause some cancers. They, if you have a bottle of water or if you have a water filtration system, it's something that could be filtered out. But if you're just ingesting it or you're watering your garden with it. Those are chemicals that are going to stay there forever. How many folks are with you in Protect Middleway? We, the Protect Middleway as a group, is there's four of us. Uh, a neighbor, Jesse Norris, and her partner, Sean, and then my daughter, Nicole. Uh, we've been doing a lot of research and sort of our the town criers mm -hmm. saying, hey, everybody pay attention to this. When we first got together, we were hoping that our neighbors would convince us that we really didn't have anything to worry about. That did not happen. Everyone's very concerned. What sort of response have you gotten from the company and from the Jefferson County Commission? The company is not involved with us at all. They have made little to no community outreach or tried to uh, assuage our, our, our fears. Uh, the Planning Commission, when they had their last meeting to uh, look at the concept plan. They did unanimously reject it based on the fact that they considered it incomplete because the company didn't include the two parcels where the water extraction would actually occur. Are you a person who has gotten involved uh, before in uh, Jefferson County in regards to protesting anything or supporting something as companies come in or, or don't come in? No, I haven't. I uh, in the periphery, I watch what's happening and have a general understanding of you know what companies are coming in and their concerns, but I've just watched as an outsider. So you're not an active protester, in other words? No, nothing more than in my kitchen yet, and, <laughs> yelling about it. And how, just like me watching a football game. Yes. yes. <laughs> and how long have you lived in Middleway? I have lived in Middleway for seven years. Seven years. All right. Bill? Yeah. Good morning, Stacy. Thanks morning. for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned six of you are part of Protect uh, Middleway. Uh, with an issue as in, 
as critical as important as this, I'm surprised more folks have not become involved. Well, there are more folks involved. We we are the ones who sort of have access to who we're emailing. Uh, if we're having a town hall, we're sort of the the four of us are pulling it together. But Protect Middleway really is the entire community coming together. Okay. And we, at the town hall, we listened very closely to what all of the community members who, who came had to say and incorporated that into what our outward projection was of what we were concerned about. We, when we had our first town hall, it was about a month ago, we expected about 15 people to come. We sat out about 20 chairs and we had over 60 people uh, the standing room only, and everyone was very passionate about their fears. Uh, it's not just the water, it's also the traffic that will be coming through. Heavy tractor trailers on roads that were built yeah. in pre-colonial. Yeah. With water, you, you basically uh, define two problems. One is the quantity of water. Yes. And the other one is the quality of water, i.e. the pollutants that could be pulled in from the 3M, uh, 03M plant. Yes. If you had a co sufficiently large cone of depression, it would tend to pull these things in. Uh, the, the key, I would think, would be the amount of withdrawal versus recharge. Do you, have you, do you have any sense at all how quickly or how active this aquifer has been recharged and from what sources? The information that we have officially is through the triad report that was submitted not by Sidewinder. It was submitted because of they had an issue with a well that they were drilling, and so that was able to be obtained, that information. But the hydrologist, very expert hydrologist that we've had look at it, have said that the recharge rate that they're using is just inadequate. And that's part of the problem is there's not enough information. And we that's one of the things that the conditions that we've asked the Planning Commission for is a detailed, robust study of exactly would it be recharged. Yeah. And from where, from what size area? There. In this karst topography, as you well know, uh, the limestone is so dense. Uh, there has to be kind of a channel or a conduit for quantity to flow. Otherwise, it just kind of seeps through very small cracks, and that, that's not a very efficient recharge. Right, and part of the issue, the problem is, are there so many unknowns? And we as a community feel like, give us some information. Tell us we're going to be okay. So you feel you're being let down by your county commission? I'm let down by the fact that they feel they are either a, the application's complete or the application's not complete. They were unanimous in their vote last time to to not accept the concept plan. Uh, they are allowing it. Explain, a concept plan from what now? From Sidewinder. Okay. It's their, their business plan, so to speak. Uh, n not a whole lot of details. And also, when they resubmitted the new concept plan, there's new details and things that have changed from the last one. So the county commission rejected the concept plan of Sidewinder at the last meeting. They or, did. Or at previous meeting. So that Correct. means the project's on hold at, for this point in time? On December 17th at 7 p.m. at the planning commission meeting in the, in the, the room below the Charlestown Library is the next planning commission meeting. And that's when the concept plan has been resubmitted. It was rejected because they did not include the two parcels where they would be doing the water extraction and we believe that water extraction in, is not in the zoning ordinance that they are not allowed to do that uh, and but that's not why it was rejected it was rejected because those two parcels were not included mr gilstrap I, we hear about a lot about applications and not being complete and being rejected. What is it that's so special about the water here that is the target for this bottling plant? Now, bottling plants, as I understand it, they're going to be pulling out over a million gallons of water a day to put in bottles and, and sell in stores. Is, is that is that what the, the plan is? What it seems like their plan is, and they have not been transparent. They, they definitely hold things close to their vest. 
uh, they can they're one they have three wells they've said that one would not be used and that this the one of two the second of the three wells is for redundancy that they would pull from one well and it would be up to one one point seven two eight million gallons a day their plan is to ship it through pipes about one and a half miles to the old 3m factory where they would then build you know a water purification plant storage um, and that they would sell we don't know who their end user is they're not saying who their end user is but it's obviously somebody very large that would be purchasing the water it's interesting that, that you would think that the community has the right to know these kinds of details i just i have a, a website up here and I'm, I'm cheating a little bit the 1.728 million gallons a day is enough water to serve 5760 homes um i mean it's 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 a lot of water but now that would be full home that laundry and the like whereas this is going to be strictly drinking water correct but i mean it's yeah. it just in, in in terms of what the area is is potentially designed what what the the wells can in fact support um 7.9 million gallons a day is what i i show here from very brief um read through uh it it i'm not sure what the what is the next step it seems to me that that the uh, Bill, you were on a, a county commission or council, whatever it was when you were on it. Is it true that the hands are tied, that if as, as long as this application, all the check boxes are where they should be and all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, that there's nothing the, the commission can do? Now, that's why I was surprised with Steve Stolliper the other day when he said there was nothing they could do. Now, Berkeley, uh, Jefferson County does have countywide zoning. And so there are procedures already in place. Berkeley County does not have countywide zoning. Therefore, more comes to the the desk of the county commission than what it might with, uh, with Jefferson County. I don't know really what authority they have, but I, again, I was surprised that Stolliper left the impression that their hands were in fact tied. I would not think they would be. Well, according to this website, which is uh, jeffersoncountyfoundation.org, uh, water extraction, groundwater extraction is not listed as a permitted land use in any zone in the Jefferson County zoning plan. So if it's not, I'm sorry, go ahead, Stacey. I was just going to say, we agree with them. Uh, the parcels that the wells are on where they plan to extract the water are zoned rural. Uh, their manufacturing plan, of course, is, is zoned differently. It's for manufacturing. We don't understand how they could allow this. And if they do, then, w then what's next? Another one down the road? Uh, water is not infinite. And it's the state of West Virginia owns the water and allows us to use it. Have they produced any kind of, there's a lot of unknowns here. Yes, there is. But have they produced any study that says, absolutely, this is safe. You don't have anything to worry about. And here's the data to back up the safety of this operation. Have they put anything like that out? There is a, a study that was done by Triad when the, the well was first put in. Um, it was not released by Sidewinder, the, the owner of, that's trying to move this forward. Who paid for that study, Stacy? They they paid for the Sidewinder? study. Sidewinder? I'm assuming. I'm assuming. Sidewinder is the owner of the property now? Is that the company that owns yes. the property? Okay. Yes. It's, a, and it's an investment group. They're, right. they're flippers, right? And this kind of approaches own mineral rights, subsurface mineral rights. Water, I think, is viewed as a mineral. Uh, does zoning, local zoning, cover subsurface mineral rights? I don't know the answer to that. I suspect it does not. I, d I don't know the answer technically to, yeah. to that question. I do know that in, in West Virginia, water is owned by the state, and we're allowed to reasonably use it. And by use it, I'm assuming that means I can brush my teeth and wash my clothes and water my garden, or farmers can water their vegetables. Uh, I, I don't know how using it to sell it to somebody else is under the definition of use. Stacy Chapman is our guest from Protect Middleway. Some concerns over the proposed water bottling plant in that end, <laughs> excuse me, that end of Jefferson County uh, has uh, gotten the local population in Jefferson County quite interested in this uh, proposed business plan. Does this concern extend throughout Jefferson County, Stacy, or for now is this very much centered around Middleway in terms of the concern? There, in Jefferson County, 
uh, there are many people that are concerned. They've had some water issues over near Harpers Ferry where they had to switch their water source. Um, we have been in West Virginia in a drought that's been declared by the state. It's only projected to continue. Uh, so there are many people that are concerned. There's also people that are concerned just about what this means for the expansion, not just in the county, but in the state. Mm -hmm. uh, what we really need is some land use attorneys that maybe would come forward and really give us some advice um, and, and tell us you know, what rights we have and what they think legally that we can do to protect all of Jefferson County and the state of West Virginia. Has your group sought the opinion of a land use attorney or the services? We have, but ap apparently they're, they're sort of limited. It's very hard to find one. We've talked to some um, who are who feel bad and would like to help us, but just for different reasons, they're not able to. And on the checklist of information you'd like for Sidewinder to provide, what are some of those things that you are looking to have answered? We would love a comprehensive water study that tells us, is the water really there? Can it be maintained? Is that toxic plume going to move and affect the wells that are in the area? Also, the traffic is a huge concern to us. Even at the minimum, it means a tractor trailer every nine minutes on roads that are 20 feet wide. It, it, the Department of Highway says you need at least 24 feet. We have no shoulders. Our homes sit from 8 to 10 feet off the road. So th the amount of traffic, and that's just the tractor trailers, the if you include the employees, it means an additional car or truck every two minutes, 24-7. Let's separate the traffic out from the water sure. for, for just a moment, just sure. so we can keep focused on the water here sure. in general. Uh, my understanding is the, the, the concerns were also that you could lose a well if you're yes. water dependent on the well. Yes. If it dries up because so much water is being extracted, that's a problem. And the answer I'm told is if your well dries up, we will drill you a new well at a different different depth or whatever. How much do you know about this? Well, they did proffer that, offer that as a condition at the Penning Commission meeting that everyone within 1,000 feet, which was um, 22 homes, um, that would be affected. They said they had two years in which they would drill a well, no questions asked. But it, it affected very few people. They did agree to well monitoring. Um, for half a mile, which again is very few people. I do believe in the, the new conditions. They said they would do well monitoring, but that's not defined what well monitoring is and what would they, they would do about it if they found that we were being affected. Rob, let me come back to the point with the type of rock we have, the dense limestone. And uh, uh, it's unlike other type of aquifers such as shale or sandstone and the like where there's kind of the ubiquitous layer of, of water and it's fairly predictable of where the water the zone the water would be in that's not the case in limestone uh, and again there's a if there's a conduit or a, a channel feeding it uh, or if there's not a channel feeding it's awful difficult to say that you can drill down another hundred feet or another 200 feet and get water where you're not getting it say uh, 50 feet and if you drill down to 250 feet you get water in limestone that is not that predictable it would be in other types of rock but not in limestone I point out that uh, bill is geologist yeah. uh, by the way so he has a little bit of knowledge of rock uh, yeah but not I'm, I'm not a hydrologist except when i was on county council county commission uh, in berkeley county uh I was one that authored the uh, uh, the uh, prohibition of 15 homes or more, and I spent a lot of time studying groundwater in Berkeley County. Mm -hmm. The one thing I came up with, and I talked to a lot of hydrogeologists, both the U.S. Geological Survey, uh, WVU, or not, w yeah, uh, WVU, and others as well. The bottom line was, it's awful hard to predict. Stacy, we have two minutes left. December 17 is a big day in Jefferson County once again. And what will happen on December 17th? December 17th at 7 p.m., again, in the, the room below the Charlestown Library, the next planning commission meeting will be. We invite everyone to come out, voice their opinions on, on how they feel about it. They have three minutes to speak. Um, also, December 10th is the deadline for anybody to submit a written comment to the Planning Commission. You can go right on their website. It's very simple. It can be a, a, a simple email that just says you like it, you don't like it, and, and the reasons why. And we encourage everyone to have their voices heard.
Do you believe this is a done deal, that this company's coming and no matter what you or anybody else does, it's going to be a part of Jefferson County? Uh, I may, may be a naive, but I don't believe that I am. No, I don't think that they're going to come because it's wrong. And and it, it, it's wrong. And we're going to keep working to stop them no matter how many meetings we have to go to, no matter how many things that we have to do legally to, to stop them. We're going to continue to try because it's wrong. And I would submit, just from my time working in, in Washington trade associations and such, the written comments can carry a lot more weight than the three minutes of speaking in, in front because you, there's only so many three-minute time periods that you can have at a meeting. But this is not necessarily, if, if for those who are opposed to this, this is not a middle way issue. This is a local issue. And I would encourage folks to, or if you're, if you're in favor of it, to really go to your keyboard and, and send in written comments. Thank you for that. But, but this is an issue that there is an answer to. You just have to find the answer. And the answer is a the balance between withdrawal and recharge. And that information can be garnered if you spend the time to do the study. Thank you, John. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Stacy, for coming in. We appreciate it on your day off. Thank you very much. We are back with more. Financial Phil will join us next.